Hello, Kim Townsell. Today's video will talk about good things to do on a resume. What are resumes? Well, resumes are documents that we create in order to get jobs, to get scholarships, to get awards, and sometimes we have to do them in order to get good grades in classes. You may be watching this video in order to do one of those things. I hope the information here will help you. We're going to show you things to do on this video. I have other videos up showing what not to do, and some other tips on resumes. It has been said that sometimes resumes are only looked at for maybe 1 to 30 seconds before they're either discarded or put into the pile for further consideration. 30 seconds is actually a long time, but it's not going to give someone the time to read everything that's on a resume. What they're looking for is format. What they're looking for is just to seem to have all the content there in a, in a format that is going to be easy for the reader probably the person who first looks at your resume is not going to be the person who will interview you or the person who will do the hiring. It's going to be vetted by some graduate assistant, some uh, person who's getting paid minimum wage or close to it, an administrative assistant or somebody like that to, uh, to sort them out because most people in the hiring process simply do not have time to look at all the resumes that come through for, for particular jobs. I know for one teaching position that at a school where I was working, they had something like 300 applicants for one teaching position. Now you know that the Board of Education did not look at all of those resumes. The principal probably did not look at all of those resumes. He probably had someone else in the office go through and say, find me the top 20 and I'll look at those. If that's the case, if your position that you're seeking is highly sought out by other people, all the more reason for your resume to stand out, to look professional so that it's given longer than 30 seconds for them to examine the content that's in there to prove that you're the most qualified person. We do not want to send in a silly looking resume when we're really qualified, but that silly document gets us thrown into file 13. We do not want to do that. This video is not the end all and be all of resume creation. It is intended to be as a good starting point for teenagers and people at the start of their career. This is a pretty good example of a one-page resume. It's clean, the person's name is at the top, the contact information is at the top, all the headings are of the same type and style, they're all left justified, that means they're bumped over to the left, all the dates are right justified, that means all the dates are bumped over to the right, that's going to be a little tricky because you're going to have to hit that space bar until the date wants to go to the next line, then either hit the backspace or the delete to bring it back up. This is important because employers want to be able to look down that right hand side to check the dates of your employment, when you were in school, when you did volunteer work, when you did whatever you're listing on your resume. Everything that you do should be listed in reverse chronological order. That means the most recent is at the top and you go backwards in time for each event. Additionally, when you indent, you want to keep the indentations the same for everything. For example, under educational background, you can see that two universities are listed. Underneath those and indented are the top of degrees that were earned at each of those universities. The same thing under the educational work experience, you have the places indented and underneath that the role is indented again so that there's continuity and things look the same. Now I'm going to read over just some reg uh, regular tips for writing resumes. At the top you want to have your personal information, your address. If you have two addresses, like for example if you have a temporary address you want to indicate that but you want to put a permanent address on there. Put a cell phone number and another number for that can be used to reach you. Use an email address. Do not use a email address that is associated with a school because it looks like you're going to remain a student there. You want to have one that has your first name and your last name at something. That way people can contact you. Cute little names and numbers that mean something to you do not mean the same thing to other people. You want to make it easier for these people to contact you to offer you a job, a scholarship, an award, or whatever it is that you're seeking. The objective, some people like this, some people do not. If you do write an objective, keep it super, super simple. 
if a bunch of resumes just land on, for example, a principal's desk and there's no objective, he or she may not know what the applicant is looking for. So the objective is going to say, oh, this person is looking for a family consumer science position. Otherwise, the person is going to have to read through the resume to try to find out what kind of degree this person has, where they might be suited. It's going to waste that person's time. The premise is, if a person is going to waste my time with the resume, they're probably going to waste my time on the job because they don't understand how to follow instructions, they don't understand how to make things simple and easy to use. Once you have graduated from a university or post-secondary institution or earned post-secondary certification, no one wants to know where you went to high school. However, if you're applying for a job and the person shares a similar high school background as you, that might be something to bring up during the interview. It may not be. Only put your GPA, if it is 3.0 or above, on a 4.0 scale. On your experience, you put the experience that relates to the job that you're seeking. Most likely you have a lot of educational experience and or job experience, but you only want to put down what is relevant for the position that you're currently seeking. Under the job experience and volunteer work, use action verbs to demonstrate what you did. The employer wants to know what you actually did while you were an employee there or a volunteer there. You can use Google to find what is meant by active verbs. Do you want to put a reference section at the bottom? No. They're going to request references. Generally, those are provided on a separate piece of paper. It is generally unprofessional to put reference contact at the bottom of a resume because resumes are frequently photocopied and passed around the office or the agency and your reference may not appreciate having his or her phone number or address and or cell phone number photocopied along with your resume. Also, do not put references available upon request at the bottom. People know that. Do not put resume at the top. Do you really want to work for someone that you have to broadcast the fact that this is a resume? Can't you tell it's a resume by looking at it? Some general resume tips include, be honest and make sure all of your information is accurate. Make sure you get someone to proofread your resume. You can probably find mistakes on mine. I don't think anyone can create a perfect document. Be consistent in your format, your font, and your style throughout the resume. Don't use any wild colors. Make sure that it's 8.5 by 11 inches. Print your resume on a quality printer or take it to a printer and have them print it out for you. Use black ink. Do not use any graphics or fancy fonts on your resume. The smallest font should be 10 point. Don't make it any smaller than that because it's going to be harder to read. You can use bold, italics. You can use capitalizations, you can use underline, but choose something and go with it. As you see here, all the headings are done in all cap letters and they're bolded, they're not underlined. One tip on capitalization, if you're using spell check, it tends to ignore words that are in all capital letters, so type them out in lowercase, make sure the spelling is correct, then go back and change them to all capital letters. Again, use action verbs. Limit it to one page if you are a beginning professional. If you don't have a lot of work experience, awards, or achievements, then you can list uh, coursework that you took in college or post-secondary training that's relevant. Do not spray it with perfume. Do not staple it. If you have to put something together, use paper clips. and Don't try to be fancy. Some do nots on the resume. You don't want to use the word I, my, or our because we know that. Again, don't put resume at the top. Avoid putting anything that could be perceived as negative. You want to emphasize a positive. Be careful about mentioning religion, political parties, or natural, natural origin, or using statements. You would hope that people reading these are not biased, but we cannot control those types of things, and so we want to put ourselves in the most neutral and most positive light. Don't put a photograph on there. Again, remember to proofread it. Avoid putting references on the resume, and don't use an email address that's unprofessional or provocative. Again, don't use your college email. It may not be available to you, and it identifies you as a student, not as a professional.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helps. I hope that you get everything that you're seeking for as long as you're qualified and seek it in the right manner. Remember that professional manners will open a lot of doors. Until next time, take care.